Well, now that we've talked about Halloween and Thanksgiving, I guess it's time to talk about Christmas, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and I actually let you talk me in to starting to celebrate Christmas before Thanksgiving. On November 1st, no less. <laughs> right. <laughs> we went and saw Straight No Chaser at the Colonial Theater. It's the day after Halloween, Lynn. <laughs> yeah, they're awesome. They're they're one of my favorite new Christmas artists. They were so fun. I mean, Michael Bublé, sure. Mariah sure. Carey, sure. Yeah. These guys are fun. They're so fun. I walked into it like, okay, here's the thing I'm doing for Mikey. But I ended it like, all right, there are some there are some pretty solid fellas. Yeah. I mean, I genuinely got pretty hype. One of my favorite, the first half of the show was just um, a cappella dude singing. And then the second half of the show was a cappella dude singing Christmas music. Which was fun. I thought it was just perfect for November 1st. Yeah. And we were so close to the stage, too. We were only like three rows back. We were right there. It's called the Slaying It Tour. They were in Salt Lake the following night. And I don't know where. They're, they're going to New York and Chicago and all sorts of major cities. Mm -hmm. And we got to see them. Like, almost first. Which is pretty cool. They're from Indiana. Yeah. But they started, like, in Montana, Kalispell or something, I think, is where they were before us. And that then sounds right. They're just going to keep moving east. Right, until yeah. Until so Christmas. That, but, yeah, finally on Christmas, they can be home. <laughs> so, so, yeah, they basically just tour for two months solid, mm -hmm. and then they're done. Yeah. That's it. I mean, I would do that. So, it was so, yeah, it was so cool to see them. It, live in person. I had never seen them before. I guess they were here last year and I missed it. Oh, bummer. So it was really cool to go, to get the t-shirt. Mm -hmm. And okay, they got a couple of brothers. There's nine. So th there's nine dudes total. Seven are white, two are black. Uh -huh. Of course, one of the black dudes, his name is Freedom. He uh, beatboxes like crazy. Such He's a cool name too. Amazing. Him with the bass guy mm -hmm. in tandem are just amazing. And then the other black guy was a hoot and a holler. Yeah, he was funny. He was. He went down into the crowd and even twerked on one of the uh, in in our row, no less. Yeah, this Twer elderly lady right on the end. <laughs> he he runs back up on stage, looks back at the lady, and says, "You down with Brown?" <laughs> <laughs> I didn't catch that. That's oh, funny. Yeah. So he made a couple of black jokes. Like he he was like. <laughs> Hey, uh, it's nice to be here in Whitaho. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wasn't he like, oh, yeah, it's nice to be one of the five black people here in Whitaho. Yeah. And there, yeah. Uh, and there, was, a, there was a black dude in the front row. <laughs> he pointed out and said, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and he's right. You know, and I've noticed that we've gotten a little bit more diverse. And I feel like the last eight years. Before then, nothing. <laughs> right. For me, growing up, there were the Murphys and the Fosters. Mm. I know a lot of people know uh, Lucretia and Llewellyn Murphy. He went on to become like a footballer person mm -hmm. and then uh, Brad Foster and family. And that was about it. And now we yeah. have Grandpa from Grandpa's <laughs> Lloyd from Grandpa's Southern Barbecue. That's true. I'm glad he's in town. Me, oh, me too. Because that, <laughs> that food is good. So, yeah, no, I think I knew like two black kids and they were both adopted. So their families were white. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so he goes, hey, it's great to be here in Idaho. You stay white, I'll be black or something like that. <laughs> yeah, I'll be black soon or something like yeah, that. Something yeah, something like that. He was really funny. I liked that he took it on the chin, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, you know. He had a good sense of humor about it. Just because something is racial doesn't mean it's racist. Yeah. You know, and I think we all need to be a little more loose like that. I think so too. And then one of the other guys thanked Aislin Mays at Skyline Barbershop. I guess he had longer hair and just got a nice trim. And it looked good. He had a fade. And I don't know if he comped her tickets, but she was in the audience. So uh -huh. that was super cool. That was super cool. Well, and I actually tried to do a fade on my Mexican. Oh, did you? And I did such a bad job. Oh, no. Such a bad job. I really tried. I watched a YouTube tutorial and everything, <laughs> and it was terrible. So seeing yeah. his fade, I felt a deep sense of appreciation because it looked good. It did look good. <laughs> yeah. But I just love acapella music. And in fact, I, you know, you were a drama nerd, right? In oh, yeah. uh, high school. I was a choir nerd. Not that we had, a, like we had a drama class, but it wasn't like... Official. <laughs> but but yeah. Yeah. You're one of the drama kids. Yeah. There's the debate kids and the mm -hmm. drama kids and the choir kids all sort of seem to intermingle. Right. Well, and my dad's always ran the Civic. And before my dad did, my grandpa did. So I've always gotten to see all of the plays and stuff. Like I've yeah. been fully entrenched in theater. Yeah. So I was in choir. I went to Allstate Choir. 
<laughs> my first time in Dork. Moscow, Idaho. <laughs> and I was when I moved to Seattle for a little bit, I was actually part of a huge barbershop, so not a quartet, but mm-hmm. whatever 50 dudes is. I guess barbershop, barbershop choir? Called the Seattle Sea Chordsmen. In fact, I still follow them on Facebook. Oh, fun! And I became a member of the SPEBSQSA, which is the... What is that, Mike? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> <laughs> I asked with my eyebrows, that's for sure. <laughs> it's the Society for the Preservation and Encouragement of Barbershop Quartet Singing in America. I can't believe I still remember that. <laughs> you know what? They really should have shortened that acronym down just a little. <laughs> but that's why they did it, because barbershop quartet guys are, and acapella guys are notorious uh, pranksters. That's true. They, they like are. to have a little fun, as you saw. I did. And I've sort of come to the conclusion after being uh, in a musical last year that I don't think I'm a solo singer. I don't. Oh. I, but like when you're supported with a group, I was in sounds choir for a little bit. Maybe I need to get back to that. Yeah. The singing's fun, but I don't have the chops to do it on my own. You did great, kid. <laughs> <laughs> All right. One other thing I wanted to bring up, because I'm not sure everybody knows this. Do you know the little laurel or the curly Q or the leaf or whatever? the It, it almost looks mm-hmm. like a small P. Is it the P from Paramount when it was a Paramount theater? Oh. But it's, on the, it's on the corner now of the Colonial. Yeah, I hadn't thought of that. I thought it was just a little flare. And if you ever think, I wonder if that thing ever lights up, it, it does mm-hmm. on the nights of performances. Yeah. So, and, and I think I kind of knew that, but as we walked out that night, I was like, oh, hey, look, it's there. Yeah, which is such a good way of doing it, too. Yeah. Because I know I've driven past it before, and it's been on, and, I, and I've been like, what am I missing? <laughs> right. You know? Right. It's yeah. like a little, uh, it's it's like the Krispy Kreme freshly made donut Oh, sign. funny. Yeah. I was going to say it's some fluorescent FOMO. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. And, yeah. and maybe that's why they do it. Yeah, so, well, and uh, it's technically neon, but you know. <laughs> I want to be a part of the Bright Lights Big City. Yeah. 